In this video, I'd like to talk to you about the role of hyperbaric oxygen therapy in diagnosis of cancer. We'll talk about active cancer and cancer in the past. Then we talk about prevention. There's a lot of misconception in the field and many physicians are still reluctant to use hyperbaric oxygen therapy in their patients with cancer diagnosis. In this video, you'll understand why is that and how we can apply HBOT safely and effectively for somebody who's had a diagnosis or who has a diagnosis of cancer. There are a lot of misconceptions and as community, as medical community, up until 2012, we thought that cancer was a contraindication for hyperbaric oxygen therapy. We thought that oxygen actually stimulated growth of cancer cells. Therefore, people who had cancer were always told that hyperbaric oxygen therapy was contraindicated and they could not pursue the treatment. Yet in 2012, several scientific studies came out that proved that cancer cells behave very differently from normal cells in oxygen-rich environment. These studies were replicated many times and now in 2025, we're absolutely sure that hyperbaric oxygen therapy can be beneficial for someone who has cancer diagnosis. There are several ways that we can apply HBOT in situations like that. And let's go over every situation and see how to apply hyperbaric therapy safely and effectively in cancer diagnosis. First and foremost, Hyperbaric oxygen therapy can be used for someone who's had a radiation injury. More so, it's an approved indication of hyperbaric therapy, which means that many insurance companies, depending on a country, of course, on the insurance, you really have to check it. But because it's an approved indication, insurance companies should cover the cost of hyperbaric therapy. We also know that hyperbaric is extremely effective in the treatment of radiation injuries. That's why it's an approved indication. We also know that if a person is being pre-treated, pre-conditioned with hyperbaric therapy prior to receiving radiation therapy, it often helps them to prevent radiation injury. In my opinion, it's always easier to prevent things than to deal with a situation when it already happened. So please talk to your integrative oncologist or to your regular oncologist. If you're scheduled to have radiation therapy, ask them whether or not they suggest and they approve that you can do hyperbaric oxygen therapy. If you get a no for an answer, you can do your research on internet and bring them some information that is clearly saying that hyperbarics can be used for injury prevention or also i suggest looking for a second opinion someone who is more open more receptive on the use of hyperbaric therapy it's my belief that in 10 20 30 years every single physician will be educated on the use of hyperbaric therapy, whether in radiation or other conventional cancer treatment. But we don't have this luxury now, so a lot of times we need to do our own research. And probably that's why you're watching this video. Hyperbaric oxygen therapy can also be used concurrently with conventional treatments. It's another misconception because people always say it's either conventional treatment or alternative supporting complementary treatments and hyperbaric falls sort of under umbrella of those treatments. Now we know that it could be used concurrently, both with chemo, if particular chemo drug is not contraindicated in hyperbaric therapy. There are four uh, chemotherapy drugs that are contraindicated, uh, which means they cannot be used together, cannot be used on the same day, and there should be some lapse in time between the administration of chemotherapeutic agent and uh, hyperbaric therapy. Besides those uh, chemotherapeutic agents that are contraindicated, there are others that are not. 
and hyperbaric therapy will potentiate the effects of uh, chemotherapy but it will also make cells less resistant to chemo or more receptive of chemo i should make a disclaimer and i should say it and i will repeat it several times in this video because in my opinion it is very important please 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 let your oncologist know what you're doing let them know that you're also receiving hyperbaric oxygen therapy if you decide to do so because your oncologist on their end might decide to adjust treatment dose for your chemo um, they need to know everything else that you're doing beside conventional treatment and i know trust me i know that sometimes it's difficult because not every single doctor out there is receptive to the idea but at the same time if we keep educating those physicians a situation when every doctor is educated it will happen a lot faster hyperbaric oxygen therapy can also be used as a supportive therapy during chemo um, or other conventional treatment it will help a person deal with side effects of chemotherapy make them stronger make them more resilient and definitely it's a great addition to many therapies that can be used together with chemo and prevention prevention is very important because prevention is the best cure we need to do steps all of us every human being to prevent diseases from happening and this includes healthy lifestyle but also many regenerative therapies that regenerate rejuvenate ourselves and make us healthier and hyperbaric is one of those therapies it is definitely recommended to someone who has had cancer in the past uh, they're in remission they don't have any active cancer but they're constantly doing things to improve their health to make sure that this cancer doesn't return uh, hyperbaric can be uh, an absolute marvelous addition to those therapies because it is known to optimize mitochondrial health it is known to optimize immune function and just make the body stronger more resilient and healthier on a cellular level every single cell needs that oxygen that we're sending there with help of hyperbaric therapy now let's look at myths and misconceptions we talked about one of them that agebot cannot be used together with conventional treatment it's absolutely not true it can be used together please let your oncologist know that you're also doing hyperbaric therapy in addition to conventional treatments that you might be doing and as i said it will help prevent radiation injury it will make chemo radiation more effective your body less resistant to conventional therapy but also support and provide much needed relief from side effects our next myth is that a person needs to be in ketosis or they need to be fasted when they do hyperbaric therapy if they have cancer i should say the myth is that they must be in ketosis it's not like that anybody can benefit from hyperbaric therapy whether they're in ketosis whether they're fasted or not however when you combine fasting ketosis and hyperbaric therapy it has the synergistic effect it potentiates the effect of every therapy involved so ketosis in combination with hyperbarics not only in cancer diagnosis in absolutely any situation will drastically improve metabolic health will improve mitochondrial health a lot more than if we were to do these therapies separately just ketosis or just um, hyperbaric oxygen therapy there is also a myth that every single chemotherapeutic agent is contraindicated in hyperbaric therapy it's not there is a list of the drugs that are contraindicated an oncologist or a hyperbaric expert would know the half-life of that drug 
In other words, how long does it take for that drug to leave your system so you can safely administer hyperbaric oxygen therapy? Which means that hyperbarics will not be contraindicated in the full course of chemotherapy, no. But uh, it will probably not be a good idea to do HBOT around the day when you receive chemo and the exact timing will be decided either by your oncologist or if they don't know and they're a little reluctant to do it, you can always find a hyperbaric expert who will help you to do that. Our third myth has to do with the fact that hyperbarics is contraindicated in cancer diagnosis because oxygen stimulates tumor growth and it promotes blood vessel growth within the tumor. This is not the case. We thought so before 2012, but now we learned that tumor cells in oxygen environment will not behave like normal cells. In fact, every tumor is hypoxic. It's a, if it's a solid tumor, it's hypoxic, meaning that it doesn't have enough oxygen inside that tumor. And tumor cells, they adapt to live in that hypoxic environment. They develop different strategies that will help them replicate and grow specifically in the hypoxic environment. When we change that hypoxic environment to oxygen-rich environment, those cells don't have the strategies to grow and replicate. Therefore, this oxygen-rich environment is detrimental to cancer. It's not promoting cancer. It's important to understand it. It's a lot of information and I understand that it can feel overwhelming and you don't have to do it on your own, even though I know sometimes it feels like it, that you have to do your own research and come up with all those studies and information. But there are people out there who are knowledgeable. More and more oncologists are incorporating hyperbaric therapy into the list of the therapies that they offer or the list of the therapies that they oversee. Hyperbarics can be safely integrated with not only conventional treatments, but also uh, with alternative complementary supportive treatments. And there are experts out there who know how to do it and who will help you in your journey. I want to wish everybody well. I hope that you liked this information and that you found this information helpful. If you know someone who has cancer diagnosis and who is considering hyperbaric therapy, please share this video with them. They will find it helpful as well. And as I always ask you, please leave your comments uh, in the comments section. I do my best to answer all your questions.